2019 was a beautiful year until the world got hit by a pandemic in 2020. And while we were just getting out of the pandemic, in 2022, a war broke out in the world. And if that was not enough, we started seeing tech layoffs in 2022 and 2023, and they are still going on while we are speaking. And now we are seeing bank failures. This is rapid how quickly this bank went into total collapse. Investors from Silicon Valley Bank's implosion. Academy of a collapse of a big bank. Silicon Valley Bank's collapse set off a panic not seen since the days of the financial meltdown of 2008. <laughs> Welcome to 100GB, let's try to get a glimpse of what's happening and how it affects the software or the tech industry. One specific thing about Silicon Valley Bank is that it gives loans to startups in different industries like space research, biotech accounting and not just software. Just to amaze you, Silicon Valley Bank has worked with a staggering 760 unicorn startups. Wow! A unicorn is a company that is valued beyond 1 billion US dollars. And to put this in perspective, India only surpassed the 100 unicorn startups mark last year, highlighting the exceptional impact Silicon Valley Bank has had on the startup landscape. Chapter 1. How do banks function? Let's understand this by taking an engineering approach. To begin, let's view a bank as an API with three primary functions. Deposit money, withdraw money, take money on loan. Uh, depositors can call deposit money, which results in the money being split into three parts. The bank keeps one part in reserve, invests another part in stocks or bonds to earn more, and lends the third part to borrowers with the intention of earning even more. When a borrower calls take money on loan, they promise to repay the loan with interest at a later date by calling deposit money. Typically, the interest rate that borrowers pay is higher than the rate that depositors earn, and that's how they earn money. Before we move forward, take a quick 500 milliseconds break to hit the like button and subscribe to 100GB. Chapter 2. What led to Silicon Valley Bank crash? Three significant factors contributed to the bank's crash. Firstly, due to the pandemic, the Federal Reserve lifted the mandatory reserve requirement that banks were required to maintain. Consequently, banks started investing all their money in the stock market and bonds. The stock markets crashed, which caused the second part of the money that the bank had to diminish. Secondly, the Federal Reserve increased interest rates on loans, causing bond prices to drop, which further contributed to the bank's financial instability. Finally, due to these factors, the bank began losing money. Word got out and customers Customers started calling withdraw money. Although it might have been manageable if only a few people withdrew their funds, the bank could not cope up with everyone requesting their money back because they no longer had the reserve and they lost the other two parts of the money. Consequently, the bank crashed. While there may be other contributing factors, this is what I could ascertain from my limited research and understanding. And this happened super quickly on a Friday. Meanwhile, Chapter 3. What is the present situation? Monday morning brought speculation and concern. Imagine the multitude of companies that store their entire cash reserves in this bank. Millions of dollars at stake. Some woke up to the realization that they could not pay their employees as the payroll system had failed and there was no money to cover the shortfall. However, the US government took swift action and announced several measures. Firstly, depositors would receive all their money back from Monday, although the sources of these funds remains unclear. Secondly, they would provide additional funding to eligible depository institutions to assist in meeting the needs of all their depositors. And finally, they are closely reviewing the supervision and regulation of the Silicon Valley Bank going forward. The government's prompt action within 48 hours of the bank's crashing highlights the severity of the potential cascading failures and its repercussions. Chapter 4. Where do we go from here? In my previous video on layoffs, which I recommend you to watch it after this one, touched on the reality that even experts can no longer be fully trusted, which has been enforced by the recent bank crash as well. I just lost $10 trillion in two seconds, but it's okay guys, don't worry. The worst case scenario is that this could trigger a cascading effect leading to the failure of other banks. And unfortunately, another bank in New York has already experienced the same fate. Fighting systemic risk, regulators shut down Signature Bank Sunday. The U.S. Federal Reserve, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and the Treasury have said the depositors in Signature Bank, a New York-based regional size lender with significant uh, cryptocurrency exposure, was also shut down on Sunday. However, there is hope that with the efforts of the U.S. government, we can prevent like total collapse and gradually emerge from this crisis. Chapter 5. What does it mean for software industry and software engineers? Okay, let's first consider the potential impact on startups. According to a report by the National Bureau of Economic Research, software startups accounted 
for nearly 40% of all new firms in the US from 2004 to 2016. And this number may have grown to 50%. The figures might be similar across the world, including India. Well, okay. The recent bank crash may lead to increased skepticism among startups about putting their money in any bank. In the worst case scenario, if other banks fail, startups may struggle to pay their employees, pay for marketing, pay for production costs, leading to a sh like a shutdown of the entire company. But let's stay hopeful that nothing of that sort happens. I don't have a very good feeling about this, seeing how the world is progressing since 2020. Another thing to note here is that Silicon Valley Bank has branches spread out across the world. They are present in Canada, London, and a few other countries. So most natural thought that comes to my mind is that in the short term, we might see some hiccups in the other countries as well. Wow. Okay. Now, as far as the big tech is concerned, if a major bank crashes, we may see a similar impact as with startups. The best case scenario would be that nothing happens. Or there is a middle ground where only a few small banks crash and government bails them out by pumping more cash into them. However, as seen in my previous video, an influx of cash into the market can lead to inflation, which is already high. So it's a mess right now and we better not think about it. Just kidding. The meta point is that it's hard to predict anything. So what does it mean for you? It kind of depends. If you are a college student, you can learn that an industry's current high may not remain the same in the future. It's a dynamic world, so having a diverse skill set is important. For engineers or mere mortals like myself, we should remain optimistic that eventually things will get back on track, as they have in history every time something like this has occurred. It may take time though. And on that note, let's end this video. And here you have another reminder to hit that like button. It really helps the channel. Thank you for watching 100GB and I will see you in the next one. Bye.